All right, now here we have a Betsy Ross made by McCormick Distilling Company. She's very well made. Now the fine porcelain, as you can tell by the bottom, she is made by the American Porcelain Company, but they had factories also in Japan, so I imagine she, uh, well I know the, she might have been uh, ma uh, painted and everything in Japan, but the, the, their main office was in uh, Philadelphia, I believe company. Um, she was made in 1975 but actually was for the 1976 Bicentennial Celebration. This is all the different ones that are on that. This is her box. And, uh, Cormac's was founded by Ben Holiday. Betsy Ross, we want you to make a flag for us. That's what the Continental Congress asked her to do. Early in June of 1776, Betsy Ross, a young widower, keeper of a small upholstery shop in Philadelphia, re received three distinguished visitors. Towering authorities over six feet tall was George Washington. Almost in his shadow came Robert Morse, known for his liberal financial aid to the cause of independence and ushering them in the floored Colonel George Ross, member of the Continental Congress, eager signer of the Declaration of Independence and uncle to Betsy's late husband, John. It was his influence that had brought this secret empowered committee to Betsy Ross's parlor. So now you know they requested her to make the flag. With greetings and introductions complete, the three men came to the point of their visit. We want you to make a flag for us. Betsy told the story to her grandchildren many years later how George Washington produced a drawing of what he and his committee thought was the flag, what the flag should be. She related how she had studied and made suggestions. The star should have five points, not six, and the star should be equal in size position in the circle, so none of the early United States should be jealous of or claim superiority over the rest. Betsy's thoughts were accepted enthusiastically, and George Washington, penciled in hand, sketched a new flag as she described it. Thus, the stars and sti stripes were born. So she was very influential in making the flag. So it was on that June 14, 1777. Continental Congress adopted Betty Ross's flag as the official banner of the new nation decreeing that the flag of the 13 United States, the 13 stripes alternate red and white, and that the Union be 13 stars with the blue field representing the new constellation. She was pretty remarkable, wasn't she? 
she had a lot to do with what we have as a national flag. She pretty well designed the whole thing. Betsy Ross, traditional seamstress of the Stars and Stripes, had been born Elizabeth Grissom, Griscom in Philadelphia, January 1, 1752. Legend holds that even as a young girl, she showed aptitude for fine needlework. She certainly grew up with a fine sense of personal independence as she demonstrated when she eloped in 1773 with John Ross of Newcastle, Delaware. A short time after the couple set themselves up a upholstery shop on Philadelphia's Arch Street. The shop prospered, but the stirrings of rebellion grew and John joined the military. The military the mil military of them. He served well but he lost his life in the line of duty early in 1776. So she really had a reason to want to make this flag I would imagine. Pretty remarkable. Well I think that's a nice little history lesson about Betsy Ross. A lot of stuff I just learned about her today. More coming later. Thank you.